What's up, guys? I was just over on Instagram, and I wanted to answer some questions, but I can't ever see any of the questions there because they come so rapid fire. So I popped over to Facebook, and I thought that I would do like a good old-fashioned sit down, answer some questions, say hello to people, um, but I can't tell if anyone's watching yet. Oh, here people come. Oh, there we go. So if you have any questions for me, um, I'm in the middle of filming the crossover right now. I am filming Supergirl with nobody from the Supergirl cast, uh, and I'm drinking out of a Flash canteen. Um, yeah. So anyway, so Brandy Murtha says, are you excited for the new season? I am. We premiere Monday, uh, much to the chagrin of Emily, who thought we premiered on Thursday. And uh, I know that a bunch of journalists screened the premiere episode on, I believe it was Wednesday, although it was possible it was yesterday. The days are conflating in my mind. Right, It was yesterday. And um, I got a great note from Beth Schwartz afterwards that there was uh, a phenomenal reaction towards the end of the premiere. And I've just, fingers crossed, you know, double cross um, because we have a lot of uh, surprises this year and uh, we've gotten all the way to the premiere without anything leaking so um, I always want what's best for you guys you guys being fans and people who watch the show and the best thing I swear to God is to be surprised on Monday night at like 8 58 great surprise um, Arthur K.T. Caldwell says, do you have any input regarding the crossover this year? Yes, I'm going to swear. If you're watching with children, last warning, the crossover is fucking bananas. It's crazy. I am four days into it, although technically I'm like nine days into it because my week started last week and was really compressed, even though I was still just working on, on uh, still just working on Arrow, but this week I was Tuesday on The Flash, Wednesday on The Flash, Thursday on The Flash and Arrow, and today on Supergirl. But I think that this will be the best crossover event that we do. And not just the best, but the best by a really, really wide margin. Like, and I think that last year was a fantastic, like Crisis on on uh, on Earth X. I think that's what it was called. Um, that was pretty crazy, and getting to play doppelgangers was pretty crazy. But um, you know, when Greg Berlanti first talked to me about why he wanted to do crossovers, it was because it's it's for the fans, like it's so that people can watch. Um, characters and scenarios that um, that combine their favorite things on TV or introduce them to new things on TV but you also just get this license to do things that we could never do in the vacuum especially on Arrow that we could never do in the vacuum of ju just our show um, and I know that we have some crossover surprises and 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 some things that are gonna hit the media um, it's supposed to be late this later like during this week but now I think it's going to be early next week. So, yeah. I I had the coolest day yesterday on set because uh, on the one hand, I was very, very happy and uh, excited for David Ramsey. And on the other hand, I saw something with my own two eyes uh, standing right in front of me that I just, I just never thought I'd see. And... Melissa was doing Kevin Bacon footloose dance moves in her Supergirl costume. And she, Grant, and I had a walk and talk scene that reminded me very much of the West Wing. And probably got to say the coolest thing that I've ever got to say on the show. Just in terms of something that made me smile. Um, and uh, all three of us high-fived after the scene and I immediately decided that it was like a top five moment in the history of doing the show for me, which is exciting because I've been doing it for 15 years now. 
Kai Andrew says, how do you feel about this season of Arrow? Is it one of your faves? Um, yeah, actually. Um, you know, I, I think that on a show, you, you ebb and flow. And I know that our first and our second season, to me, felt very special. Uh, uh, the second being that we learned a lot of lessons in the first, and I feel like we executed them in the second. I'm very, very fond of the fifth because it, it, it brought to an end, an era of the show. Um, I really liked that we you know, created a villain and, and made that villain so iconic and Josh's performance was so wonderful. And just bringing the flashbacks back to the pilot uh, was a real sense of accomplishment. We also had our 100th episode. This year feels like such a departure because Oliver is in prison. And the prison stuff is so different, but the prison stuff also gives other people a chance to to really shine. And uh, also, hello to Elijah. That's from Mike. I'm trying to make your dad be cool. Uh, hi, Elijah. So, uh, the seventh season feels really unique. We're gonna hit 150 episodes in episode 12, which is amazing. We're only doing 22 instead of 23, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I promise you it is. And um, I just saw how long do you think Oliver's going to be in prison for? I will say longer than everybody expects. Also, this is not my bandana. I said that. I was just on Instagram Live a second ago. I, I said this was not my bandana over there, but I just want to I, I make sure that everyone knows it really is not my bandana over here. Uh, Matthew... Uh, Mulberger says, will you miss the Legends uh, involvement with the crossover? Yeah, of course, especially because I just, I mean, Katie Loss is one of my OGs and, and not having her around feels a little strange. I mean, she's been playing her character in the Arrowverse, gosh, longer than just about anyone. I mean, she's, um, you know, she's made Sarah Lance... Um, a critical part of our universe, but concurrently, it's just so exciting to expand the universe with uh, with Ruby, who looks phenomenal as Batwoman. I'm so excited to work with her. I haven't worked with her yet. Um, she and I have been trading messages, and that's how I trade messages. I'm excited to uh, work with Tyler, who I've never worked with. I think that's going to be happening next week. And I'm very, very excited that... Uh, my wife is is going to be, um, I can't tell you where she's going to be, uh, but um, it's just, it's I'm very very excited to have her on the show. Um, I want to and a big shout out to Aiden Pickering. A lot of people here. There's a five year old that's named after Arrow, Monty Mansfield. And there was a nephew that was named Oliver Chase. Jeez. Oh, man. Okay. Um, Scott Beams was asking what I think of Cody's appearance in Arrow this year. I, I really like it. I, I mean, uh, I think just professionally that he did an excellent job. <laughs> and uh, personally, he was so wonderful to me as I ventured into the world of professional wrestling that... Uh, being able to help him, not that he needs my help, but being able to be there and, and as an assistance for him to enter into the world of, of, of acting is, is very, very cool. Um, it's very, very cool. And he's good. He's good. I really enjoyed working with Michael Jai White a lot. Vinny Jones was fantastic to work with the other returning character that we have coming back that we haven't uh, disclosed yet and certainly hasn't leaked. It was fantastic to work with them. And, uh, yeah. Okay. You're welcome, great guy. I like taking time for you guys. <clears throat> Lot of Olivers, Mary Rowe. She's got a son, Oliver, too. Big shout out to him. Uh, Dallas Miata says, do you think you'll have an Arrow movie in the works? No. Because we're still shooting the show. Uh, I will say, though, that... No, I won't say that. 
So Melissa Twilling says, the Arrow is the first show I ever binge watched that's hero related. Now my kids have me on The Flash. Well, The Flash is halfway decent. It's good. It's a good show. Congratulations. I'm kidding. It's fantastic. Congratulations to them on 100, epi 100 episodes, too. Um, I'm glad they got to do their own standalone uh, 100th episode. I know that our 100th episode was part of the crossover, and I know that some fans were kind of upset, like, uh, shouldn't Arrow have its own moment? And I actually liked it because it allowed us to execute the storyline that we wanted to. But I also think it's cool that, that Flash got its own. I know that Grant was super pumped for it, and I think it's even neater that Tom Cavanaugh got to direct it. Christine Adamski Fisk says, it's nice to see you without blood on your face. Isn't it? I think it is too. And I'm 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 happy to be back to a to a more normal um to a more normal facial hair length. It 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 just got to be a bit much towards the end there. But I'm I'm just about to watch a cut of episode seven, which I believe is Oliver's last episode with the beard and um that episode is going to be bananas just totally bananas um oh also would be a good time to to say when i did my wrestling match at all in i fractured my hip i have an occult fracture in my hip what can you do about an occult fracture absolutely nothing it just hurts and i had to go from that match into episode 707 which is probably one of if not the most physically demanding episodes that we've ever had on the show. So I'm an idiot, never forget this, but just for the record, in case anyone from WB is watching or any of our producers or writers, it prohibited me from doing nothing. I just didn't have the best time because I was in pain. Uh, Matt Califano says, will William have a bigger role this season? Yes, he will. William will have a bigger role this season. Um, Andrew Villers says, what happened to the Jays jersey? Um, Justin Garza says, you were great and all in. The table elbow drop, wow. That didn't hurt. Uh, the table actually sort of acts as a crash pad, believe it or not. It was the coast to coast. That hurt. Ah, oh, boy. Okay. Um, Cody Lewis says, any news on Code 8 lately? Yes, I know that we're getting very close to announcing premiere dates. And that we are locking those in. But uh, I am not a huge part of the planning for that. I just have to plan to be at all of them. Which I will be. Uh, Tony Brooks says, I've seen pics of you hanging out with the cast of Chicago Med. Would you like to appear on those shows? Well, I just know one person on that show... Although I do know Tori DeVito. I know Tori DeVito, too. I did a show with her like a million years ago. But I know, obviously, Colin Donald's my buddy. And um, uh, I was in, when I was in Chicago for All In, he very graciously let us go over to his apartment just to have a drink or two because we were out having dinner around there. And we wanted to just be somewhere where, you know, I was with my friends. Uh, and he and his wife, Patty, uh, bought this beautiful uh, cabinet piece. And I saw in the cabinet... There was the Arrow 100th episode lunchbox that we gave out. I don't know why we decided to give out a lunchbox. I would have much preferred... Well, I got a jacket too, but whatever. And I decided that I was going to hide it in his apartment. And it took him over a week to find. And Patty really appreciated it because in the process of looking for it, he had to clean up. He only got it because I gave him a hint. Well, my wife gave him a hint in the form of a riddle. But anyway, I'm tremendous at hiding things. Uh, Stacey carter Bourne says, what do you think of Felicity's pink hair? I think Emily looks wonderful all the time. <sighs> um, okay. Uh, Chris Simmons says, I'm a big fan from Australia. I didn't get a chance to see you, but are you coming back? Yes, I am coming back to Australia. I don't want to step on any announcements, but I am. Sometime in June. We're also going to be doing Code 8 premieres around that time. And I think that we'll be adding some Code 8 premieres, I think, I think that aren't currently listed or cities that aren't currently listed. Um, I 
James Shade said, can you tell us how much involvement you have in the creative content in terms of stories, villains, stunts? I mean, I always pitch stuff, but in terms of the macro overall stories, it's more like that's that's our creative team. Uh, so Beth Schwartz is our showrunner this year. She's running the room, our writer's room. Uh, and then Mark Guggenheim this year actually took over for the crossovers and basically wrote all three scripts, which I thought was a fantastic idea because it, it gave one person the chance on, on building a through line because... You know, I, the first hour is Flash, and the second hour is uh, Arrow, and the third hour is Supergirl, but that's in names, name only. It might as well be Elseworlds Hour 1, 2, and 3, because w w the crossover starts, just because it starts on the Flash doesn't mean it starts in Central City. Although I think it does. I did, however, pitch and it ended up in the script, the very first scene that you are going to see in the crossover, which is really funny. It's really, really funny. Uh, Corey Vicker says, if that bandana is not yours, whose is it? It's my wardrobe. Bananas. The crossover is bananas. Uh, Jennifer Clackett says, is this the last season of Arrow? No, I, I don't think so. I'm signed on beyond this year. Um, you know, when you get up to these stages, you tend to you tend to go year by year. But I have a contract for another season of Arrow. It'll come down to if the people at WB and the CW and DC and my family <laughs> feel like doing another season. But I'm I'm here for uh, I'm here for. Uh, another season beyond this. And then <clears throat> if we get to that season, we'll decide beyond that. David J. Spiegel says, last time I promise, but there's a possibility of Black Lightning appearance sometime down the line. Nothing is impossible. I mean, when we started the show or just started the Arrowverse, it was like, you can never make a Gotham reference. Well, we can make Gotham references. And not, not only that, we have Batwoman in the show and it was well you can use Supergirl but you can't use Superman and now Tyler is playing Superman on the show uh, and has a really significant role in this year's crossover which I'm excited about because I've you know I've met him a few times lovely guy but I've, I've never got a chance to work with him so uh, is Black Lightning going to appear? Uh, sure I don't know why not? Crest is a great guy be fun to have him around um Yeah, I just really can't get over yesterday. I went to my friend who's a, uh, a comic book DC aficionado and a huge fan of the shows and, and DC movies and TV and comics and everything. And I said, I'll give you 10 guesses as to how who I worked with yesterday. And I'll point you in a direction if you're getting warm. Nope. Oh, we're close. Uh, Dexter Teodini says, what happened to, I'm going to make sure Arrow will outlast Supernatural's episode count. Are you crazy? I didn't say next year would be the last year. I said, right now, you sign a deal, it's long, and then you tend to go, like, year by year. And, but there's just, there's no chance. There's no chance. I mean, there's always a chance, but there's no chance. Uh, Todd Kegel says, are they going to cast a Batman or Green Lantern in your show's universe? I would never say never. What are your thoughts on the Longbow Hunters from what you've seen? Max Martin, I haven't seen anything. Will Oliver meet Ralph Dibney this year? I don't know who that is. Am I supposed to know who that is? I have no idea who that is. Stacy Lynn, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, um, says, will Detective Lance be back? I don't think so. I mean, that was a pretty, that was a pretty, uh, pretty deadly death. That being said, Paul Blackthorne is always welcome back if they can find out a way for him to come back, be it a flashback or an alternate universe or a, you name it. But we certainly miss him. If Paul, if you're watching this, we miss you. A couple more questions, guys. Uh, Jamie Lark says, how do you feel about Iron Fist being canceled? I, I, I 
just first of all, I just found that out, so it might not be true. Secondarily, if it is true, I don't like anything being canceled ever because the, uh, a show is much more than the actors on it. It's the crew that works on it. It's the people that write it. Uh, so I don't know a ton of people on Iron Fist, but um, it's too bad. Two seasons isn't bad, though. Um, Robert Anthony says, I saw online the blooper where you sang to Melissa while she was asleep. That was hysterical. I haven't talked about this yet. This will be my last thing that I answered. But last year during the crossover, when I was Evil Oliver talking to Evil, uh, evil Tom Cavanaugh and Evil Melissa was supposed to be in a state of near unconsciousness or actually asleep on an operating table, she's supposed to wake up at a certain point and she was just totally asleep. And once we found out she was asleep, they immediately tried to wake her up. I stopped them, of course, told them to point the camera at her and then saying it's crossover season and Melissa fell asleep and she woke up immediately, dropped an F-bomb and everyone had a good laugh. But that's what crossovers will do to you. You'll end up asleep on an operating table or wearing a bandana and a jeans with a chain on them for a wallet, which I've never done before and I don't like. So that's it. I hope everyone has a wonderful Friday night. Thank you for sticking around and um, I'll talk to everybody soon. All the best.